In February of 2023, OnlyFans saw approximately 1 billion monthly visits from users worldwide. The website launched in 2016 and is a social and video platform that allows creators to monetize their content via paid subscriptions and tips. In recent years, the London-based platform has become increasingly popular for hosting adult content. Though today, we'll be focusing on the darker side of the site. Welcome to OnlyFans Girls Who Became Horrible Criminals. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Ah, different, different room. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, like I said in my last video, moved out of my mom's house. Thank you guys once again. Give me that opportunity. I know it's it's gonna take it's gonna take some time to get used to. Believe me. But yeah, we got the YouTube achievements up there. Here, I'll show you guys. Y'all see that my YouTube achievements up there? We got Danny in the background, like always. I mean, as time goes on, I guess I'm gonna be adding more stuff to my room. But I'm gonna get a different light though, because I feel like this light is. It's shining downwards, so you see like a shadow on my neck. But anyway, we're back. We're finally back, man. I, I'm, I'm so happy to do these regular videos. Took some time off. The whole moving process was crazy. But very quickly, I'm gonna give you guys some announcements really quick. So the last restocks of ear candy CDs and cassettes are now up on the website. They're actually signed. Like the last time I signed the plastic on them, but these are actually signed on the thing itself. So sorry to the people that bought the others. I mean, you, I still signed it though. I still signed it. Just sign the plastic. And also, the Earl plushie sold out in under 24 hours. And thank you guys so much. Look, I even cried on my Instagram story. Isn't that crazy? Y'all really ride for me. And that is crazy. Thank you guys so much. Seriously. With the whole support on Earl. And the last thing is that my podcast with my friends, The Crew Podcast, is finally back on my second channel. That's really it for announcements. Now, let's talk about OnlyFans girls who became horrible criminals. We also have an exclusive interview with an OnlyFans model who is actually at the top 3.2%. So if you think that sounds interesting, make sure to stick around. What if you get older and... You have kids and your kids end up seeing that. What if they look up your name out of curiosity on Google and they see you sucking or they're, they have a bully at school and their bully's like, hey, look, it's your mom sucking What do you do? What's the plan? Also, I was debating on whether I should name this video OnlyFans Models Who Became Horrible Criminals or OnlyFans Girls. I think I chose OnlyFans Girls, but I am very aware OnlyFans for any gender. I just want to make that clear. But yeah, that's really it. Let's head on to the video. Courtney Clenny. When it comes to OnlyFans models committing a crime, one of the most prominent cases is that of Courtney Clenny, aka Courtney Taylor. The case contains horrific details about how a tumultuous relationship ended with Clenny facing possible life in prison. In an incident that occurred on April 3rd, 2022, between 4.43 p.m. and 4.56 p.m., Clenny, age 26 at the time, is alleged to have stabbed her boyfriend, 27-year-old cryptocurrency investor, Christian Toby Obamselli, to death. The knife, which she initially claimed to have thrown from 10 feet away, penetrated Obamselli's chest right above where he had a tattoo of her name. The crime occurred at the Lover's Miami apartment, where they had just moved in at the start of 2022. Despite being new to the residence, the police had already visited them twice due to the neighbors raising domestic disturbance complaints. The series of images of the crime scene, released in November 2022 by Miami-Dade prosecutors, reveal gory details of the incident. Clenny is seen donning blood-drenched sweatpants, while also being covered in blood on her hands, feet, and part of her nightgown. The images also show some love letters from Obamselli to Clenny. It seemed he loved her a lot, given that one of the letters starts with, You are the sweetest and most annoying woman I know. The letter then proceeds into a detailed profession of love, where he even describes her as his, quote, personal sunset. Moments after the stabbing, at 4.57 p.m., Clenny made a 911 call and can be heard apologizing to the boyfriend, even as she pleaded with the operator saying, my boyfriend is dying of a stab wound. During the call, the boyfriend can be heard in the background crying out that he couldn't feel his arm. When the police arrived at the scene, they found her holding the bleeding boyfriend in her arms. There was blood everywhere, on the kitchen island, in the master bedroom, the bathroom, and the back of the living room. As they attended to Obamselli, she was ordered to sit out on the balcony where she began kissing her dogs. She was later questioned for about four hours at the local police station, got admitted to a psychiatric ward, but then was was released just two days later. The release was due to the view that Clenny claimed it was self-defense. In a weird twist of events, just after killing Obamselli, Clenny made wire transfers totaling $1.15 million to her father's bank account. They argued that the money was enough to move out of the country and that her job didn't tie her down to a specific location. It's worth noting that Clenny had made a lot of money through her OnlyFans career at that point. In 2021, she made $1.8 million. Just a year earlier, in 2020, she made $966,692. And in in 2022, before shutting down her account, she had made $327,221. Such income explains why they lived in a very luxurious address and a 22nd floor with three bedrooms and a great view of Biscayne Bay. After her release, she fled Miami to be closer with her family and on June 17th, 2022, two months after Obamselli's death, she bought a 3,080 square foot, $1.3 million luxurious home with a pool and hot tub in Lake Point, Texas near her parents. Countering the murder claim, her lawyers argued that she did act in self-defense 
defense after Obamselli had grabbed her by the throat, but a judge said that claim was incredible. The lawyers also stated that just a day earlier, he had stalked and beat her. This was revealed in released police body cam footage after the officers had responded to a domestic strife involving the couple. Clenny was once again arrested on August 10th, 2022, where she had gone for substance abuse. The arrest was after more evidence had been collected by Obamselli's lawyer. Also, it's almost like Obamselli knew things were going to take a turn for the worst because he left behind a lot of evidence that was used against Clenny. A series of phone recordings from Obamselli were presented to the court as proof of Clenny's deeply toxic behavior. The clips include her yelling racial slurs, screaming, demeaning, and cursing him out. In one of the recordings, she's heard telling him, man up, bitch, and shut up and let me slap you, dumbass. I don't know why I said it so, like, aggressive. <laughs> the reason? Well, he apparently didn't tell her that he said hello to a female acquaintance while on a bicycle ride. She even commands him, find my fucking phone and charge it. Larry Hanfield, Obamselli's family attorney, said he found the recordings as evidence of someone who is, quote, unhinged and out of control. Further evidence that she was the aggressor is a video of the couple from February 21st, 2022, in their apartment's elevator where she is seen attacking him and trying to pull his hair. Also, in an exchange over the phone, Clenny once told Obamselli, I actually literally fucking want to kill you. Which is, a. Uh... Not gonna look too great in court. Clenny now faces second degree murder for the crime and is awaiting trial in 2023. Abigail White. This case focuses on Abigail White, aka Fake Barbie, aka Mitzi Lewis, a British OnlyFans model who, following a really toxic relationship and a painful breakup, stabbed and killed her boyfriend, Bradley Lewis, on March 25th, 2021. Before we look into the highly contrasting upbringings of these two lovers, let's dive straight into what happened on that specific day that Bradley died. Earlier in the day, Abigail and Bradley met in a public park, with a meeting having been summoned by Bradley, who had resolved that he no longer wanted to be with Abigail. He informed her of the decision and she was enraged. She clearly didn't take kindly to the news. However, despite the breakup, moments after 5 p.m., the couple, together with Abigail's friends, were captured by a surveillance camera going into the Horseshoe Pub and then proceeding to the beer garden area. As they began partying, Abigail started acting weird. She was angry, short-tempered, and caused problems with other customers. This was probably the influence of mixing a line of coke and alcohol, and also the pain of the decision that Bradley made earlier at the park. You know, she got broken up with. And Bradley wasn't doing so well himself. A man found him crying in the men's bathroom, claiming that he was scared of Abigail and didn't know what to do. And he also thought that if he left, she would take her own life. I'm guessing she had a history of claiming to do that. It was clearly a messy situation and the evening, already riddled with chaos, got even worse. Abigail got into a fight with one of the customers. She slapped him and he slapped her back, causing her to fall. She then walked back to Bradley, took his drink from him, and threw it in his face because he didn't defend her. She also spat in the face of a friend who told her to stop bullying Bradley. Maybe tired of the chaos, they all wanted to go home, and so at around 7.50pm, Alfie, a mutual friend of the couple, gave them a ride. They argued all the way back and on arrival, as Abigail stormed into the house, Bradley, who had hung back for a bit, said to Alfie, I'm dead when I get home. Barely 20 minutes after Alfie departed at 8.10 p.m., emergency services got called by a neighbor, Mrs. Kundi. Mrs. Kundi had already responded to a scream from Abigail, and on entering the house, she had found Bradley lying on the kitchen floor with blood covering the hallway and living room. A knife was also on the radiator. Abigail claimed that Bradley had stabbed himself after a heated argument, a story that police didn't believe. Unfortunately, Bradley was pronounced dead at 1.30 a.m. The knife had penetrated his heart. All right, now let's go back to their childhood backstories. Bradley was a gentle soul all the way from childhood. He grew up in a loving home with his childhood football manager saying he was one of the nicest kids you could ever meet. And on the other hand, Abigail grew up in an unstable home. While aged just four years, her parents split up due to domestic violence. Even worse, her stepdad, who came into her life thereafter, was physically abusive towards her, so she ended up in foster care. All along, she had behavioral problems in school, and due to mental and emotional instability, she got prescribed antidepressants at just 13 years old. Abigail's path ended up with her doing only fans where, despite a good start, making £60,000 in the first year, her popularity dwindled, leading to an income of about £12,000 a year later. She, however, managed to survive by relying on Bradley's income. The two had been an item for a while, since they dated from back when Bradley was just 16 years old. They even had three children together. However, their relationship, which Abigail termed very rough and controlling, was mostly turbulent with allegations of cheating. This is well evident given they had a fourth child that wasn't Bradley's. Following the death, Abigail pleaded guilty to manslaughter. She refused to take full responsibility, despite the amount of evidence against her. Phone records, for instance, revealed that she had sent hundreds of threatening messages to Bradley. One message from February 7th, 2021 read, I swear to God, I will stab you. There was also a damning voice recording where Abigail told a friend that Bradley could only tell the truth when she, quote, beat the fucking daylights out of him. Obviously, I have no limit when I get angry. And like, obviously he said that I need help with that because people are generally saying to me, one of you are gonna end up dead. Like, 
and I fully believe that I'm quite capable of killing him if he hurts me again. And, or I'm going to end up being in prison. But I don't believe a f***ing word that comes out of that boy's mouth. I have to beat the f***ing living daylights out of him for him to tell me the truth. And he still doesn't tell me the truth. He only tells me the truth when he thinks I'm going to f***ing kill him. Like, when I get a knife out. Like, when I f***ing stab him. Like, oh, I just, I just don't get this kid. Equally disturbing evidence is that just about a week before the fatal stabbing on March 19th, 2021, Abigail had stabbed him in the arm, causing a massive wound. Bradley had covered for her lying to the doctor, saying that he had an accident at work. So, where did the case end up? Well, in 2022, Abigail got sentenced to life in prison, which means that she'll be jailed for at least 18 years before being legible for parole. Jeannie Exum. So the two cases we just talked about have something in common. That being that they stabbed someone to death. And I don't know why that's a, I don't want to say popular, but kind of popular way that OnlyFans criminals have killed people. I don't know. I really don't know how else to say it, but this is another one. This is another stabbing one. In a strangely familiar fashion to the other two, our aggressor, Jeannie Exum, an Instagram and OnlyFans model based in Manhattan, stabbed her boyfriend, Francis Amore, following a domestic dispute. The incident occurred on Monday, October 18th, 2021, at around 6.45 p.m. at their luxurious apartment. They lived at 10th Avenue, Hudson Yards, Midtown, in New York City. The couple had been in a heated argument before Exum took a knife and stabbed Amor. At the time, Exum was 22, while Amor was 30 years old. After being stabbed, Amor staggered into the apartment's lobby, where a doorman noticed him and made a 911 call. Both the NYPD and EMS responded to the call, arriving at the location shortly after. He was taken to the NYC Health and Hospital Bellevue and remained in stable condition. Exum had stabbed them both in the arm and the back, and luckily, Amor, who went by the name Bo Baby Boy Pahulas, suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Following the incident, Exum appeared in the New York criminal court where she was charged with a class D felony, assault with the intent to cause physical injury along with a weapon. Interestingly, she didn't even seem phased by the incident since she even took a photo where she was smirking next to an NYPD detective. She posted it on her stories and captioned it, they took my phone y'all, I'm on the trap right now, and now they don't stop me and I get locked up. She said Akon's locked up as the, you know, the Instagram music. <laughs> thing for the story. In an equally carefree fashion, while leaving the courthouse, she had told a reporter, subscribe to my OnlyFans. But such behavior is no surprise, as it's consistent with her social media personality. On OnlyFans, for instance, she describes herself as a, quote, free spirit from Alabama with a loud mouth and dirty mind. <laughs> <laughs> the free spirit ideology is probably why she was so popular both on Instagram and OnlyFans. On OnlyFans, she had been charging $20 per subscription, but she put a 50% sale to thousands of her fans. On Instagram, where she often posted lewd photos of herself, she had 35,000 followers and gained 10,000 more following the stabbing incident. How lewd were the photos? Well, just a month before the incident, she had garnered a lot of followers after posting a photo where she flashed her breasts in front of an NYPD car with the caption, caption this. Her following has grown significantly in the last two years, as she currently has over 200 93,000 Instagram followers and about 641,000 likes on her over 1,600 posts on OnlyFans. Exum, while not having a criminal record at the time, was however not new to violent behavior. In October 2018, while living with her cousin in Phoenix, Alabama, in a fight over money, she hit her with a liquor bottle on the head, knocking her to the ground. Her cousin, Marlo, never pressed charges despite suffering facial bruises, cuts on the arms, a ripped nail, and a death threat. So, did Exum get sentenced for her boyfriend's stabbing? Well, just like her cousin, her boyfriend ended up dropping the charges against her. She was in jail for just a night. Later, in an interview with Barstool Sports, she said that in hindsight, the situation was more serious than she had thought, and she learned her lesson. Titus Lowe. All right, y'all, remember when I said I wanted to name the video OnlyFans Models instead of OnlyFans Girls? We actually have a guy on this list. Yeah, we are gonna differentiate. OnlyFans Girls just sounds better as a title. That's it. All right, moving on from the stabbing stories. This next one is a great example of why being aware of your country's laws, however absurd they may be, can save you jail time. The story is about one of Singapore's most successful OnlyFans creators with over 210,000 social media followers, Titus Lowe. Now, despite the large following, the well-known influencer was quoted saying that he had been struggling with money in the period leading up to 20. 21. He had thus decided to join OnlyFans in order to improve his earnings. He signed up for the platform around April 2021 and began posting content. His content did well since between April and October 2021, he made 240,979 US dollars from his 1900 subscribers. This success, however, lasted until October 2021, when a person reported to the police that they found a video of Lowe performing a sex act on their 12-year-old niece's phone. Immediately, the police responded, confiscated his phone, iPad, and the details of his OnlyFans account. I think it's worth noting that he didn't send 
any videos to any minors. The video just ended up being found on the girl's phone. I don't know how she got it. On October 11th, he was warned to not access his account anymore or they would press criminal charges against him. He defied this order on October 12th. And so the police returned to his house on November 2nd, 2021 and took away his spare phone and the OnlyFans account details again. The investigation went on, but Lowe still accessed his account and posted more content. On December 29th, 2021, he was told to present himself to the police station and was arrested and locked up. Recalling the arrest, he said, I felt very scared and the way they treated me. It was like I had done something very bad. At one point, he also told the BBC, whenever I read BBC now, I just think of better black community. Shout out Kendrick Curry. Videos are fucking hilarious. Anyway, he told the BBC, in my case, it's a consensual thing between adults. So I didn't think there was any problem. Despite believing that there was no problem, he got charged with transmitting obscene materials and failing to comply with the order restricting him from accessing his account. Transmitting obscene materials carries an up to three month jail term, while the second offense carries up to six months in jail and a $5,000 fine. Singapore's penal code clearly states that it's illegal to transmit any obscene material electronically, as well as to receive or take part in profits generated from the transmission of such material. It's safe to say that Lowe had ticked off the police because despite the October 11th warning, he had used his secondary email to log back into the OnlyFans account. So while the investigations were going on, he posted eight more obscene photos and videos and withdrew a large amount of money from the platform via a friend's bank account. The police noticed that they couldn't log into his OnlyFans account and that's why they returned to his house on November 2nd. He still went on to access the account a second time by getting help from the OnlyFans support desk and again in defiance of the police order posted 34 more obscene photos and videos on October 22nd 2022 he got fined three thousand dollars for transmitting obscene content and was sentenced to three weeks in jail for defying the police orders he served his time and on November 9th he made a TikTok video announcing his release and return to freedom he outlined his plan to focus on his firstborn and also to return to OnlyFans but without the illegal bits in the video he said that prison wasn't the best experience his firstborn arrived in March 2023 and in a classic content creator fashion he's been entertaining his fans with his new fatherhood role. It's full of wholesome content. For instance, in one of his TikTok videos, he's seen trying his wife's breast milk for, for his cereal. Yes, that, that, that wholesome family channel content. Going forward, we hope that he learned his lesson on running an explicit OnlyFans account in Singapore. And I mean, you could always leave Singapore and just go to another country. Selena Powell. Some people get in trouble to gain clout, and clout is a good way to stay relevant. One such person is Selena Powell, a Miami-based OnlyFans model, who has built herself a reputation as a, quote, black widow for making claims about her alleged sexual escapades with rappers. There's a lot to talk about with her criminal past, but let's just start with the most recent one. In 2021, Powell was arrested and charged with habitually driving on a suspended license. The arrest was made on Monday, March 8th, 2021 in Miami after she was caught making a right turn without using the blinker. The police were actually willing to let her go with a warning, but then they proceeded to arrest her after discovering she was driving with a suspended license. She was taken to jail and in a classic I don't care fashion, the next day on Tuesday morning, she tweeted, I went to jail again, LMFAO. Her license had been previously revoked in Colorado. Why was it revoked, you may ask? Well, unsurprisingly, it was because she had been a traffic offender in that state. Traffic violations aside, a year earlier in May of 2020, she'd been involved in an altercation with Tory Lanez over claims that she had messaged him on Instagram and made fun of his hairline. As bizarre as that sounds, it led to a police incident report after Powell claimed that Lanes, together with his rumored girlfriend, Kaylin Garcia, had accosted her at the Miami condos where they all stayed and caused her physical harm. It's also very evident that controversy is in her nature, given that before the Tory Lanez incident, she had made several false claims against other individuals for clout. Among her most controversial stories was when, in May 2018, she appeared on DG Academic Stream and confessed that she lied about being pregnant with Offset's child for a whole nine months. In the interview, she said, once again, there's no baby. Get over it. Suck my dick. She also lied about being paid $50,000 by Offset to get an abortion. Powell has also been arrested many times before. On December 29th, 2018, for instance, she got arrested for different crimes after bounty hunters caught up with her at a hookah lounge in Colorado. The crimes included shoplifting, evading the police, and traffic infrications. She had outstanding bonds worth of $61,000. Also, in June 2022, she was arrested for violating probation terms. She had been mandated alcohol and drug tests by the court after a 2015 arrest, where she was a getaway driver in a theft. Surprisingly, though, she got released in July of 2022. She was, however, arrested again on May 1st, 2022 for skipping a court date, among other violations, and got sentenced to two years in prison. Her court documents show that she was eligible for parole on March 24th, 2023. And now, let's head on to an interview with an OnlyFans model. Like I said in the intro, she is part of the 3.2% of OnlyFans. She has 400,000 followers on Twitter, and she's actually a subscriber of the channel. I found her on Twitter, she would just reply to my tweets, and I figured, wait, I'm making a video on this. This would actually be a really cool interview. But yeah, make sure to support her. Her ad's gonna be in the interview, and I really got nothing else to say. Let's head over to that interview.
Hey guys, so here we are at the interview portion of the video and we're gonna be talking to Luna. So I thought it would be fun to ask some burning questions. I think this will be a nice way to give a sex worker a platform and get rid of some stigma. We have our first question. How old are you? I am 20 years old. And how did you get into OnlyFans? And how old were you when that happened? Oh, so I got into OnlyFans when I was about, I, it was one month after I turned 18. I already had OnlyFans in the back of my mind like when I was 17, but I really like went with it when I was 18 and for my first year that shit was dead but once I was um at a different point in my life I actually needed the money to like you know get my first crib that's when I started taking it more seriously in my second year so you're actually top 3.2 percent is that the actual statistic 3.2 percent yeah I kind of moved like between like three percent and four percent but you fell off no I'm playing <laughs> Okay, so when you say that it was only a month after you turned 18, you weren't thinking about a nine to five or you just went straight to sex work? Oh, that's a good ass question, actually. So I actually did have a nine to five at the time I was working at for a daycare center. Whoa, and, that's um, a crazy transition, like daycare <laughs> to OnlyFans. Yeah, I was I was working with elementary school kids. Yeah, I had a nine to five at the time. I was just focused on that. I st Once I started my OnlyFans, I was like, hey, this is like some good passive income. But I still didn't take it serious for whatever reason. I still had a limiting belief, like I got to work hard for my money. So that's why I had a nine to five job. But once I released that limiting belief, like, okay, how can I like work smarter, not harder? That's when I started for real, like posting more on OnlyFans, like promoting that host, starting a Twitter and all that glam and shit. Speaking of your Twitter, I'm sure it was a slow and steady rise, but I noticed that on Twitter, you got 400,000 followers. That's a crazy <laughs> ratio compared to your Instagram where you only have like a thousand. I understand you, you recently made your Instagram, but that is a wild ratio. So I'm going to assume <laughs> Twitter is probably the best form of promotion. Yeah, you got that right. Once I started my OnlyFans and started taking it seriously in the second year, I was looking up YouTube videos and shit. They was talking about Twitter. And Twitter is definitely the only like sex worker safe platform other than Reddit. Reddit is confusing. That's why I love to stick to Twitter. <sighs> and Twitter, you can navigate through that hole so easily. There's communities for sex workers. There's other sex workers posting the same type of like similar content and we all support each other. That's how I grew so quickly on Twitter. I started from zero followers. In one year I had, I ended with 300 some shit K, damn near 400 K. Speaking of the community, have any threats come from this job? And when I say that, I mean harassment, stalking, doxing, blackmail. Oh, that is a good ass question because let me get into it. There's a whole iceberg for this shit. And <laughs> let me get to the tip of the iceberg, bro. There's moments where your content will get leaked or people will steal oh, your content. Oh yeah, they be selling it, they be reselling it. Yeah, and they be trying they try to say some fake ass shit. Like they use your content, right? They steal it. They try to hide the watermark if there is one. And they'll be like, message me for $40 FaceTime or $40 meet up like bro that shit is so fake like it happens really really often to so many sex workers even to me when i only had 2,000 followers on twitter moving down to the middle there's people who will straight up dm me i want to take advantage of you with my friends straight up creepy ass motherfuckers this one guy trying to dm me to buy and he was time wasting so i blocked him and he messaged me on another account i also blocked him again he messaged me on a third account same person he's like Block me again and watch what happens. And I posted it in a sex work safe community. And this girl comments like, yeah, he sent that shit to me too in my DM saying that he's gonna hack me if I block him again. And just straight up harassing sex Cap. workers is just really not cool, bro. Nah, he, that boy is a cat for real. But that's just the middle of the iceberg. Like moving down to the deep abyss, bitch. The dark underwater shit. Okay. You will run into straight up, I don't know if I can say this, I've gotten an instant where someone asked me for a custom video, right? And they had a whole script. I ain't even DM them first. They just sent me a whole script. They're like, hey, you look like my little sister, a minor. They said that in my the script? Yes. They're <laughs> like, hey, you look like my little sister. Can you please act out this and this sexual things as their minor sister? And I'm like, dude, that is so fucking disgusting, bro. And there, I've gotten two other people like that, too. There's this one other person that straight up admitted to me, like, hey, I'm a if I saw, a t I'm gonna F them, you know? And that was Bro. so disturbing. That's one of the most disturbing things that I will run into on Twitter or sex work in general when people will DM me. Those horrible things. It's something people wouldn't even think that would happen to sex workers or just shit like that, but there really be those creepy ass motherfuckers. The self admission is crazy. For real, how are you bold as hell admitting to my DMs that you're a 
I trust me, I reported all of them. That's like the dark side of Twitter and dark side of like sex work in general. There are some creeps looking for like some creepy ass shit like that and you gotta stay far away from there. People seem to not take sex work seriously or look down upon it. Why do you think that is and what do you have to say against that? Personally, I believe that Everybody and their mama and their granddaddy and everybody, bro, be fucking. Almost everybody be fucking. And the difference Not between me, guys. sex. I just want to make that clear. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Big ass boy. <laughs> but <laughs> the difference is between like sex workers and non sex workers is that we just get paid to fuck. We just get paid to do sexual shit. People really look down upon that because, oh, she's like being sexual and she's open about it and she's showing her nude body to the world. That should be secret and whatever. And like, I feel like it's just super deviant in our society or that's how it's viewed at least. And yeah. I just really feel like sex worker is definitely one of the oldest jobs in like history, bro. Yeah. And I don't think that true. stigma, that stigma and shame is never going to completely go away but i really hope people understand like sex work personally i stay at home and i don't go out do meetups to people who do do meetups that's great for them i don't judge them there's definitely tons of areas of sex work none of them should be categorized into like degrading terms like a prostitute or something like that i just feel like it's totally unfair okay you said there are some sex workers that do f meetups Really? Yeah. That's fucking yeah. dangerous. It is dangerous. I would never consider it personally, but I do see people on Twitter offering to do meetups. Since you are at the top percent of OnlyFans, did the amount of money shock you when you started seeing like your OnlyFans blow up? Bro, yeah. When I wasn't taking it seriously, I would get like one subscriber a day and I was already like, oh, someone subscribed. And how much yes, were it, they paying? It was mostly for just like the subscription fee and that was $15 a month and it still is but I have do, like, do you get like a, is there like a percentage split? Cause there is on Twitch, you know, you get yeah. like, so what's the percentage split on OnlyFans? For OnlyFans it's 20%. They take 20% okay. from you. Okay, okay, okay. They... I'm guessing it's the same amount of time when your Twitter was blowing up, your OnlyFans was also gaining traction. So you saw that yeah. money, you're just like, is this, is this real? Yeah, I was like, I didn't even know this could even be a thing, like to make money from this. Cause when I first started, I was, mostly making money from buyers on Twitter. I was selling dick rates. I was selling like solo pictures. I was sending videos. I was selling a lot of shit I never would have thought. And it was mostly like dick rates. Really? Like literally me typing do, what I think about their dick. Do they be sending it like soft? Bro, sometimes and it'd be scary. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like some of them yeah. have a humiliation kink. They want you to make fun of it. They want you to like say it's Oh small. yeah. Even ask me straight up like, can you humiliate me? Can I have a, it's called a, a small <laughs> humiliation video. And they would ask for that. Damn. Yeah. Nah, there's girls a lot be saying of, that like, to me and I don't even have to pay them. <laughs> to answer your question off the bat, um, I was really shocked like when I saw the total amount of money because nowadays I make <laughs> month on average from twitter from only fans fansly all my sites combined i'm gonna censor that i don't want to say i don't want you to say that on the internet i'm gonna censor that for you okay oh, okay thank you thank it's you. too personal you never tell people how much you make that's a great amount by the way i just censored it guys yeah. you guys didn't hear it but that's fucking crazy here is a burning question i know a lot of teenage boys ask i was one of them and that question is what if you get older and you have kids and your kids end up seeing that. What if they look up your name out of curiosity on Google and they see you sucking dick, or they're, they have a bully at school and their bully's like, hey, look, it's your mom sucking dick. What do you do? What's the plan? Honestly, personally, I have no fucking idea. I have no parental skills unless it comes to my dog and cats. Personally, I do not want kids ever. Like that's just a personal choice. I decided that way before sex work. Like I do not want kids. I don't think I would be happy being a mom for a fucking like human child but besides that i do know there's hella sex workers who are moms who are grandparents who are like familiar like figures in people's lives and i don't know i just feel like they just don't let that get to them that's not really like bound to happen in a way i just feel like it just wouldn't happen 10 years down the road and we'll see what starts happening then you know i wonder i this is something i texted you last night i wonder if statistically a lot of OnlyFans workers don't plan on having kids or like sex workers in general. I wonder what the statistics are. To the struggling young people out there, would you recommend 
sex work yes absolutely i i recommend sex work a thousand percent because i was dead ass like slaving at a fucking like farm like working days on end like fucking like bending over hunching over doing actual fucking labor that was just not it i was not making good money from that at all like i'm gonna be straight up i was not making a livable wage i had to figure out like how the fuck can i work smarter and only fans was definitely that outlet for me to like build several income streams from doing sex work it is definitely a great way to make money there's so many people that be like get a real job bro like that's there's people in real life and online telling me that dude i've been making co-op in my room and little do they know that they're telling me get a whole job like that yeah like i've been making the most money than i ever have at a nine to five i do want to set a reminder that this is something you guys have to think about when you're 18. If you're a minor, yes. around, don't be thinking about this. No, fucking focus on your schoolwork. This is when you are an adult. I want to reiterate that. This is an adult choice. Make sure you are a grown ass woman or man or they before you decide that. Last question on my list is, would you like some free Earl? Bro, yeah, give me that free Earl. I want that Earl and Earlette tea. That shit is so fucking cute. Bro, I would be repping that in my porn. Like, no. Y'all see that? <laughs> yeah yes i i look forward to seeing that on twitter at some point everyone go to earl doesn't exist.com buy that shit right the fuck now y'all go buy tough cds and cassette tape bro he signed that shit personally that shit's about to sell out so get that motherfucking shit before it's gone exactly it's the last of the ear candy era we're moving on to a different project so this is it i have your socials right here on the screen everyone make sure to go support her go follow her on twitter Thank follow you. me on twitter is free you, you guys can do that one and instagram and make free sure to go check out her only fans of course you're 18 be yourself be positive learn how to let go learn how to have fun and just yeah be great that's it for the interview let's head on to the outro all right guys that's gonna be it for this video if you guys liked it sure leave a like if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe let's check how the room looks with the lights on all right y'all is that better let me know in the comments y'all like the light better i personally don't i don't think it fits like the topics on my channel that's it for this video go watch the podcast it just came out today see you guys next time i upload